And we're going to look at this. And I hope you all can see my screen. Correct? All right. Um, correct, right? So I want you guys to remember that with confidence intervals, same thing with hypothesis testing, you guys have three situations that you're doing. And hold on, three situations are, let me set this up real quick. Um, give me one second. Okay, just popping up some more. All right. Three situa situations are just the same as what you did with confidence intervals. You're either testing a claim about a proportion, population proportion, P, or population mean, mu. And the two situations, if you're testing a claim about a population mean, is whether sigma is known, the population standard deviation, or not. If sigma is known, you go Z test. If it's not known, T test. And this is the stuff that you did last week, right? This week, you guys are talking about proportions. And, I, you know, I like doing proportions before means, but it's a little flip-flopped here So in this book. So the idea is, because your test is going to be mixed up, to obviously know how to figure out which situation you have. So I hope, as I approach this every time, you recognize how to determine which situation you have um, and why. So I picked this problem um, because I thought it was funny. So <laughs> only about, and I think this is number three on this week's assignment. What are we in? Week 13, right? So section, what is that? Chapter... 12, what is it? Chapter, what are we on? 9-4. Chapter 9-4, I think this is like number three. So it says, only about, so I, I'm on the test. I don't know that I'm doing an interval. I don't know that I'm doing a test. I don't know what they're going to ask me. I have to figure it out, right? I don't know what it's about. So we're going to read it once to determine what the question is asking. We're going to read it again to pull the information out. And then we'll read it again to verify. So these, you want to read at least, you know, a minimum of three times. That's the idea. Because you got to get an idea, you know, you got to get a gist, an idea of um, what they're asking you for. So only about 16% of all people can wiggle their ears. <laughs> I'm one of those 16%. <laughs> Is this percent... Lower for millionaires. What? Okay. I didn't read that part. I just saw the wiggle their ears. Lower for millionaires. I don't know why. Of the 366 millionaires surveyed, 37 could wiggle their ears. What can be concluded at the 0.1 significance level? <laughs> okay, so I'm reading this. I don't know if I'm doing an interval. I don't know if I'm running a hypothesis test. I don't know if they're asking me something else, right? Now, I see this, this question, which is kind of like a claim. Is this percent lower for millionaires? I'm going to state that there's a claim regarding, um, like, P, the percentage of millionaires that can wiggle their ears for the population of millionaires, is less, lower, actually, sorry, I'll do it in words, is less than 16%. And this P, and I told you guys this last week, and I didn't do it last week, but I'm going to do it this week because I think that it will help with the verbiage and interpretations. When you guys are writing out your hypothesis, your null and your alternative hypothesis, and you're doing variables, you have to know what the heck it's saying. What does the variable mean? So I told you, write out what it means, and then it'll help you later on in the problem. So P population proportion, but in this particular case, represents the proportion or percentage, because percentage proportion of all millionaires, our population of millionaires, who can wiggle their ears. And the claim, or at least we want to know if this percent is lower than 16% um, for all people. 
because all people are not millionaires. Um, so the claim is going to be that the percentage of all millionaires who can wiggle their ears, that's an ear, is less than 16%, okay? So my P is representing this. So every time I hear a claim, I want to write a null and an alternative hypothesis. And being that I'm doing a hypothesis or a claim about a population proportion, because I'm talking about a percentage, P, then I know I'm going to use the first situation if I need to, when I need to, depending on what I want, right? Okay, so I'm doing it about P, and I want to know, you know, what these, what these are. So being the claim or that we want to determine if the percent is lower for millionaires, lower assumes or at least implies less than, and the alternative always includes the less than or the greater than or the not equal to stuff. So my alternative hypothesis is that P is less than 16%, which is 0.16. So they, this is matching the claim here. My null hypothesis is always equal to or sometimes in this book, you might see it represented as, and I'm going to put it in a little bit darker, kind of like the opposite, but always including. Okay, it's the inclusive one. So um, writing this out, if I'm rejecting the null, then I know that I'm going to accept the alternative, which is matching my claim. Okay, so I'm thinking about this as I write it out. What does it mean? So, you know, the idea is, if I reject the null, then we're saying that the percentage of all millionaires who can wiggle their ears is less than 16%, which is all people. Okay. We'll see. Um, based on this, this is a left tail test. I'm going to go in more detail this week. Hopefully this helps. And then I need to pull out information to basically run my test. So let's see what else they tell me. Of the 366 millionaires surveyed, so that sounds like a sample size, 366. 37 of them could wiggle their ears. So remember, wiggling, <laughs> wiggling their ears is the success, quote unquote, because remember, success is not necessarily the better. It's just what we're talking about in this case. We're talking about this. Uh, yeah, I'll put this on YouTube. Um, X is the number of successes, and 37 of them can wiggle their ears. Now, I'm going to go beyond that, and I'm going to look for P hat. And P hat, or um, when you're selecting your stuff, they have it also as P like that, is your sample proportion. This is the proportion of the sample. So the sample of 366 millionaires that can wiggle their ears. So let's see, 37 out of the 366. And... You know what? I might have to share my whole screen because I want to go back and forth between my computer, my computer, my um, what do you call it? My uh, you know what I'm talking about? Calculator. And I want you guys to see it. So even this, 37 out of 366. Now I don't necessarily need to do this, but I'm doing it um for the sample because I'll show you how it'll give me that value later. But right now, we'll look at the sample. So 0.1011 if I'm rounding to four. So that means from the sample, because I obviously understand what that represents, from the sample of millionaires of the 366, 10% of that, 10.11% of them can wiggle their ears, which is less than 16%. But we have to talk about the population. This is just the sample, right? So now um, using this, we're going to see if it is true for the population of millionaires. So I hope that makes sense, um, all the stuff that I'm saying. What can be concluded at the point, uh, point one level of significance? So that's alpha, my significance level is point one. They always give me this, right? And the significance level, by the way, is the probability of a type one error. Okay, and I know you're asked to like interpret that and stuff. This is the probability of a type one error. So if I were to reject this null and state that, yeah, you know, the percent is lower for millionaires, then if I'm wrong, I have a type one error. And the percent of the probability of that happening is 
All right, so I'm gonna read it again. Pull, you know, check what I wrote. I, I'm going through this slowly because I want to make sure it makes sense. Only about 16% of all people can wiggle their ears. Is this percent lower for millionaires? Of the 366 millionaires surveyed, 37 of them could wiggle their ears. What can be concluded at the 10% level of significance or the 0.1? So everything looks good. P represents the proportion of, of the millionaires for the population. P hat or P, you know, um, how do you, I forgot how we say this. Um, <laughs> it's just like a derivative. Anyway, P here, sample proportion represents from the sample the amount or proportion of millionaires that could wiggle their ears, okay? So make sure you understand the difference. Um, now, I already looked at the fact that I'm testing a claim and it has to be about a proportion. There's nothing about an average, no, nothing like that. So if I want the test statistic and the p-value, which this problem asks me for, um, and, and, and it doesn't ask me for the critical value, but I'm going to find it anyway for practice. But if I want the test statistic and the p-value, then I'm going one prop z test. Okay, so let's go back to my thing here and let's find the test statistic. I'll write it down here and the p-value. Now, whenever I am using proportions, if you remember from confidence intervals, always use Zs in terms of critical values. You're on a standard normal distribution curve. So <clears throat> your test statistic is a Z-score. Your p-value is a probability. All right, so where do I find it? Anytime I'm running a test, I go stat. I scroll over the tests. And this time, I want one prop Z test. And it kind of tells me what I want based on what I look at here. Prop is for proportion. Z, we always use Zs. I want to test. And it's one sample, not two, because we don't do two here. So one prop Z test. And it's asking me for all the stuff that I have. So the P naught is basically what I'm running the test on, the claim value, which in this case is 16%. That's what I'm comparing things to, which in decimal form is 0.16. My X, oh, okay, they gave me, I have that here, the number of successes from the sample, 37. My N, my sample size is thir uh, 366. What kind of test? Somebody asked me or somebody told me that they were getting the p-value wrong a lot and something, and that is based on the fact that you're either using the wrong test or you're not doing this part where you tell it which kind of test it is. This is a left-tailed test, which means it's less than going to the left. If you do, you know, if you don't change this, then that could change your p-value also. Mine already has less than. You see this is blinking. This is not the one highlighted. This one is highlighted. And, in, you know, if you want to change it, then scroll over and put it on what do you want and then press enter to get what you want. So this is my output. Okay, I'll bring it over here. This is my output for one prop Z test from the situation. And it's the same thing as before in terms of the, the order in which I get my information. So that means that when I do anything like Z test, T test, or one prop Z test, the first thing that I get is always the alternative. The second thing that I get is always the test statistic. And the third, third thing that I get is always the P value. Okay, so you notice the test statistic is a z-score. This is my p-value, not to be confused with the p here, okay? See, they have it as p-hat here. I know that um, in terms of your, your drop-down, they typically have like p-tick, you know, the p-tick thing. Oh, let me plug in my, um, and that, but that's what p-hat is. It's the sample proportion. And look, it matches what we found before, right? 0.1011. So it gives it to me if I don't want to do this initially. It, it'll give it to me um, if I need it. OK, so that's why I said I don't have to do this part, but I did it just to look at the sample versus the population before I did the test. OK, so my test statistic is approximately negative 3.074, which makes sense. If I have a left tail test, then my test statistic should be in the left tail. If it were a right tail test, the test statistic should be in the right tail. If it were two tailed, the test statistic could be in either tail. Um, my p value is 0 0.0011, and I can already tell what my conclusion is going to be based on that. Um, they, in this one, they have you go through the p value method, 
which is what I'll do. I'll just do it straight off the bat. If you want me to do the critical value method and find the critical values for practice, I'll do that too. But my p-value method, and let's assume I forgot what it was. That's why I have all this here again. The p-value method says that we're comparing alpha to the p-value. And so if the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, we reject the null, which is technically what we want if we're proving the claim, which is matching the alternative. If p-value is bigger than alpha, we fail to reject. That's always true. Sometimes people ask me all the time, like, well, if the p-value is smaller than alpha, what does that mean? Well, it says it here. Okay, I wrote it down. It's, it's always the same. Your p-value in this case is approximately 0 0.0011. Your alpha was given to be 10. 0.10, uh, 0.10 or 10%. So it is clear, and this time I also get asked the question, how do I determine if p-value is less than or greater than alpha? Well, is this number smaller than this number or is it bigger than this number? That's just like on a number line. This one is smaller than this. And if you're comparing decimals, which I think some of us forget too, as you go from, from the decimal to the right, basically if these two are the same, the first digit to the right of the decimal. If they're both the same, go to the next one. If they're the same, go to the next one. In this particular case, the number to the right of the decimal here is zero and the number to the right of this is one. So that means this is smaller than this, okay? Which means that I am rejecting the null. Which is what we said, um, if we were to do that, that we would support the alternative. I thought I said that one. Okay, and the alternative matched our claim. So I'm gonna type this one up <clears throat> and then I'm gonna compare it to what they have. And I didn't do the critical value method because they don't, I don't see it this week. I see a lot of p-value, which is what I told you happens as you get more practice, you do a lot more p-value method. But I think I'm gonna do the critical value for practice just in case. But um, there is, all right, so let's see. Based on all the stuff that we determine, and by the way, you know, we saw that for the sample, the percentage was smaller than 16%. But remember, we had to run through the test to determine if that was true for the population. So there is sufficient evidence to support. Now, if you want, you can go back here because I'm rejecting the null, so I'm supporting the alternative. So there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that, now what was the alternative? P less than 0.16, what did P represent? That the percentage of all millionaires who could wiggle their ears is less than 16%. Millionaires who can wiggle their ears. Is less. Than 16%. I don't know why. <laughs> but okay, there is sufficient evidence to support that because of the fact that we rejected the null. Now, let me compare that to this is the option that you have in terms of interpreting this problem, okay? So I took this from the problem. Uh, these are the options. You know, you pick one of these. So, which one of these matches just what we determined? Um, here, just what we know, which one makes sense. So I don't know why this always happens. Which one follows suit? So we're rejecting the null, right? So we want the one that's going to correspond to rejecting the null and supporting the alternative. So let's see. The data suggests that the population proportion is not significantly lower. Now, I'm not going to support that because of the fact that it does say that it is lower, right? We rejected the null, so we're supporting that it's lower. So I'm going to, you know, exit that one out. Not that one. Let's see. The data suggests <laughs> that the population proportion is not significantly lower than 16%. That also doesn't go with what we determine. The data, well, process of elimination, but we're, we're going to verify this. The data suggests that the population proportion is, is significantly lower than 16% at this significance level. That's kind of what we determined because we supported the alternative. So there is statistically significant evidence to conclude that the population proportion of millionaires 
who can wiggle their ears is lower than 16%. That matches what we determined because we rejected our no. Now this is how I do it, especially with these multiple choice. You wanna eliminate what you know is not correct first. So at least if you have to guess, you have higher probability of guessing correctly. And I go based on these little words here, is not, is not, does it match this? What does this say? These little words can change and change the whole thing. Does it match what I'm basically determining after my test? Write it in your own words and then see what matches your own words, if that helps. Now, I don't think they have this, but I'm gonna talk about it. Being that I rejected the no, where is it? Being that I rejected the no, which error could I possibly have? Type one or type two? Well, which one deals with rejecting a no? Type one error deals with rejecting a no when it is true or supporting the alternative when you shouldn't. So I have a possible type one error here. And oops, let's interpret that. Interpret your type one error. Okay, so I'm gonna have this here. So our type one error, actually check this out. I'm copy and paste. I'm going to take that, copy it. Um, I'm going to go and say that <clears throat> our type one error here is rejecting the no or supporting the alternative with, when it is um, false, right? So I'm supporting. So supporting the statement or the fact that there is statistically significant evidence to conclude that the population proportion of millionaires who can wiggle their ears is lower than 16%. I'm supporting that because I'm rejecting the null, but I'm wrong when it is not lower than 16%. This is the type one error for this particular case situation. Write it in your own words if that helps. And you know, then if you have to choose from multiple choice, pick which one matches your situation. Okay, now I didn't do the critical values here, I might stop the recording and then you guys tell me if you want to do the critical values. So let me stop.